Hey you all, I am your fave Nurse B. Thanks for coming back to my channel. So I want to come on real quick and give you all some answers to some questions that you all submitted. So if you're not on my Instagram, go ahead and go follow me on Instagram. I do ask a lot of questions. I do a lot of story times, not story times. I put stuff in my stories on there. I don't always post that often, but let me look at some of the questions that you have. So someone said, can you go to school for nursing LPN and still work full time? I'm a single lady living on my own and currently a CNA, but moving up to LPN. Any tips or advice would be awesome. So I don't want to put your name out there because I didn't ask you if it was okay to put your name. But anyways, thank you for submitting your questions. So yes, it's definitely possible for you to go to school and work full time. I, I did it. I have about three videos that I'll link down below uh, that talk about how I was able to do it. I graduated at the top of my class. I was, I didn't have any children at the time, but I was married and that comes with its own, you know, things. Uh, but yes, I, I was able to do it and now I'm currently in school. I don't work full time. Um, but I kind of do, yeah, I honestly do. Between this, my other channel, my website, and also going to actual physical work and having two kids and being a wife, I feel like your girl works full time and overtime. But that's life. I love it. I enjoy it. I'm blessed to do it. But any home, yes, it's definitely possible, especially with you being a CNA. Like, girl, you can change your schedule to however you want to change it as a CNA. CNA work is 24 hours, so that's a perfect job to have once you get into school and usually LPN programs are 12 months to 18 months so that's really not that much time that you have to put into it so it's definitely possible especially right now most online most programs are now online so that makes it even easier not easier but I just feel like it kind of takes out the the need for you to commute somewhere you're at home if you're busy if you got stuff to, you can listen to lecture while you're ironing your clothes for work the next day. You can listen to lecture while you're cleaning up your house, while you're cooking and meal prepping for work or for school or whatever. You can, it's definitely feasible. If you want it, you can have it. It's, you can do it, trust me, you can do it. I'm proud of you, go for it. Okay, so someone said, could you talk about nursing care plans with us? How you learn best to formulate them? You all, I never learned how to do care plans. Uh, I remember just, they gave us this little template and clinicals and it was like, Patient has this related to this as uh, evidenced by this, and then you put what your goals are for that patient. Um, I did care plans at work. I honestly don't have any formula for it. Is once you understand the disease process, you think about the, everything that can happen to that patient based on the disease process, and you think about what in, what are you going to put in place to prevent that from happening. So if a patient has, I don't know, risk for infection, then um, based off of them having a, a history of UTIs, um, then you know that some things you're going to do is you're going to provide peri care, you're going to provide education, you're going to um, increase fluids or provide fluids if they if it's indicated with their other diseases. Uh, you are going to look for certain signs and symptoms of infection. You're going to administer antibiotics per MD order, la, 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 la. And um, also the education that you give to the patient, you know, how to clean themselves, knowing to drink more fluid. Like it pretty much is a whole cycle. But I honestly, we have not gone into depth about care plans, but I do know that at work, I have done care plans. And it's really just about you looking at what their disease process is and thinking about everything um, that could happen to that patient based on the, the disease process and what are you going to do as a nurse to first pre prevent it from happening and also to treat it if it does happen so that's all I got yeah I really don't know uh let's see um so someone else said documentation I'll be applying for a DSN program but sometimes I feel a little intimidated intimidated by the thought of all the documentation nurses are required to do um, they say English is not my first language, so I would love to have more insight on real life nursing documentation. So I do have a video about documentation. I feel like it's a really good video. It's a way, I had locks still back then in that video. But um, with documentation, it's all about you just documenting what you did. Um, and yes, there is a lot of documentation out there, but a lot of times there's like, it prompts you. So it'll ask you questions like, so for example, if a patient fell, like there's this whole little thing in there. Where was the patient at when they fell? What time did they fell? Was their call light on? Um, did they have a wet brief? Were they trying to go to the bathroom? What were they doing before they fell? What did you do after they fell? What were their vital signs? There, it's, it pretty much has a template, like in the computer, si computer system, or if you're doing paper charting, there's like a little template to paper chart with a fall is, whoo, that's a lot. But anywho, I remember we used to have to do fall packets, child, it was so much 
work. But anyways, um, but it just pretty much prompts it. I would not let documentation stop you from going into nursing. I understand what, you know, English being your second language, of course, like you do become more intimidated by it. But, and I don't really have a lot of advice for somebody whose English is their second language. I wish that I could get somebody on here who has, you know, learned English and they're in the healthcare field and they've overcome all the hurdles. Uh, I wish that I could get somebody on the channel to just talk to that population because I really feel like that population should become should be coming into healthcare, should not be intimidated, should feel empowered to do this. Uh, but if you all know a channel that really talks about that, please leave it down below for everybody to see. Um, I think that that's important that everybody be represented and feel like, okay, if that person is doing it, I know I could do it. So I would wish I could have somebody on here to talk to you all, but I don't have anybody yet. But any home, um, talk with your school, see if there's any ways that they help with students as well. But plenty of people get into healthcare and English is their second language. I mean, there's a plethora of MDs that do it all the freaking time. So I'm not saying like, it's gonna be easy, but it's definitely freaking possible. It's definitely possible. I just can't give you my personal, um, my personal testimony about it because I obviously haven't gone through that. But don't be intimidated by the documentation. It's really you recording what you did for the patient. You know, and that's important that you do that. And like I said, I have a separate video about it, but it's important for you to show I did X, Y, and Z for my patient. They had these type of problems or these type of concerns. I educated my patient, I elevated their legs because their legs were swollen. Um, I called the MD and got an order for this. I talked to the family, I did that. You're just saying what you did. And maybe you can work on documenting your own life. Maybe that might be a way to start is you getting into the habit of writing about certain things that happen, recalling certain things and writing about it, journaling might help you. I think that's like a mundane way of doing it, but practice makes perfect. You know, some people hate documentation, but because it's a, it's a time for you to reflect on what you did and it does take time, but trust and believe, don't be intimidated by it. When you're in school, talk to your professors about, hey, this is something I really wanna make sure that I work on. And they're, I'm not gonna say they're gonna work on it a lot in school. I feel like they did do a decent amount of it, but um, talk to them about it and tell them that's something that you really wanna work on and see if there's any opportunity for you. But don't get intimidated, you can do it. So, so, so someone said, what answer do you give people, mostly nosy patients, that ask if you got the blank, blank, blank. Y'all know what I'm talking about uh when you didn't get it i personally don't feel comfortable getting it okay so what i mean just tell them you didn't give it you don't have to go into detail just say no i didn't give it i didn't get it i didn't get it um that's it i, I don't know I, like i never had a patient ask me that i've had somebody ask me and they were like did you get it da, 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 or was it offered to you and they kept asking me i was like and it was not even a patient or anything like that and i was like no i haven't received it no that's it. Like, I have not received it. Like, I don't, it's kind of like people ask you about like, did you vote? Who did you vote for? Like, no, I didn't vote. Or yes, I did vote. That's it. That's a complete sentence. Okay. No, I didn't do it. Did you take the vaccine? No. You don't have to get defensive or like angry. People just say, no, you know, honestly, I just didn't get it. No. And leave it at that. I don't know. I, I guess if they keep asking you about it, just, uh, just try to deflect the, the question or you don't have to go into detail about it. You don't have to make it a big thing. No, I did not get it. Is there anything that you need from me? Anything else you need? Leave it at that, okay? I don't know how else. I, Cause I had to think about how the scenario would go and I just have not had that situation happen to me yet. Uh, so watch it happen the next time I freaking go to work. So someone said, give us some RN school updates. How are you doing the program? How are you studying? Compare and contrast the difference between studying at RN Bridge your prereqs, oh gosh, do you feel you are being challenged? Are you studying while you're at work? Okay, I'm gonna do a whole separate video about that. But thank you so much for commenting. Um, somebody else said, yes, how do you study? Ugh, what else? I know I have some more questions. Hold on, you all. Um, how to take notes. Okay, someone wants to know, how do you take notes, good notes to actually retain the information? So for me, um, it's good to know your learning style. I got a separate video about that. And I have a whole playlist of taking notes in nursing school, how to take notes. To me, a big thing is concept maps. I honestly have not done a concept map yet while I'm in this program. 
for me, the biggest way that I've been, I guess I'm going to talk about studying. Okay, the biggest way that I've been studying is listening to a lecture over and over again, writing down notes from that. And then also uh, writing on my dry erase board. I've been doing that a lot, especially because there's drugs that we're having to learn now, which I know the drugs, but it's like you have to know the class as well. I wouldn't, I didn't really go too deep into learning the classes while I was in the LPN program. Plus like some stuff you'd be like, oh, but anyways, um, yes, writing it down over and over again, talking to yourself, thinking about the scenarios, doing questions help a lot with studying. Um, but taking notes, uh, yeah, reading helps looking over your powerpoints i feel like i'm gonna have to do this every video i'm sorry i'm gonna have to put that onto my my studying techniques or how i've been studying i'm gonna have that i'm gonna have to add that to do to that um but as far as good note taking you have to understand how do you learn what is your way of learning do you learn are you a verbal learner like an auditory learner or are you a kinetic learner do you have to actually physically do it are you a visual learner because if you're visual then you should get notes with a whole bunch of different colors different color pens and highlighters and you should really be taking your time to write things out so you can look back on it and you can get that visual you should be putting like little photos in there little like making drawing little stick i did it a lot in nursing school drawing little images little little stick figures and stuff like that to help recall your memory to it um writing out little like one page study pages concept maps though concept maps are big because they blow up one thing so you'll have something and i already got like a few videos about this but i'll talk about it here uh you'll take something like oh uh constipation right okay we know constipation but you'll put constipation in the middle and you'll be like causes of constipation signs and symptoms of constipation treatment for constipation patient teaching to prevent it because you always want to think about how you prevent this from happening again right because we don't want our patients to keep having to go through the same crap and you want to make sure how you can prevent it too medications that you might get for constipation what are the uh side effects of a patient having constipation what could be the worst thing that could happen right and then you look at the worst thing that can happen maybe it could be they become impacted to the point where it completely gets blocked up now they got a freaking bowel obstruction now they coughing up all this you know bm and you're like oh my goodness what do i do now so what is that you think about okay if the biggest complication from um having constipation is maybe having a bowel obstruction what are the signs and symptoms of that the treatment da, 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 da. you go deeper and deeper so all it is is that you're getting deeper and more engrossed into that uh disease process you're getting more engrossed into the actual drug if you're putting a drug in the middle uh you can you can even just do it on a concept the concept of like um what is it called you can put some, like a concept like it's a nursing concept uh documentation we talk about you can put documentation on the on in the middle and like you can put different types of documentation why do we document um what can happen if we don't document when do we document um, how do we document uh, things like that who uh, things to know about documentation things to add to documentation things to admit from documentation all of that is just all about taking that one ideal that one thing whether it be a disease a drug a concept a way of thinking whatever and you blow it up and you just think about all the different components of that put it on one sheet of paper boom that combines your kinetic energy because you're writing it down the visual energy or learners is because you can do different colors and designs you can write a little stuff on there also auditory you can read it off you can put it down and always test yourself when you're studying you have to test yourself you just cannot take notes because notes can sometimes be mindless you can just be looking at the book oh listen to the lecture oh let me write it down but if you don't test yourself you don't put that down and you don't think about so my patient is taking Trulicity. Trulicity is this type of drug class. Trulicity is a, a non-insulin um, injectable. You can give it in these parts of the person's body. You should give it at these times. Da, 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 da. What are the side effects? You have to talk about it as if you're presenting it to somebody or you just have to really work it through because when it comes down to that test, you cannot look at that paper. So you got to understand, you have to make sure that, that information is in your mind and make sure you work through it. So whenever you're studying or taking notes, always put those notes down and then give yourself time to really visualize your notes and really think about what's on that note sheet or what's on those flashcards and really think about it and really go through and constantly make yourself go through that's how you create those neural pathways within your mind 
okay is because you have to keep building up that muscle. You have to keep building those connections within your mind. You cannot do that if you're only reading your notes off. Only, you have to put it down and think about it and work through it first. So I hope that makes sense. I feel like I was kind of preaching a little bit. Because that's what I've been needing to do too. I was like, oh shoot, now I'm back in school. I got to actually learn this stuff again. <laughs> Hydrate. I got my aquamarine crystals up in here. Okay. Working on that throat chakra for you all. Okay. So someone else said how to juggle mom life working in school. Whew. Let me, let me put a heart on that comment. Um, so... I honestly don't know y'all. I don't know. I have a very loving and supportive husband, so that helps. Uh, but you have to say no. You have to learn how to say no. You have to learn how to prioritize. You have to not beat yourself up about certain things. You have to use your time wisely. And you just have to just do it, y'all. You gotta just start freaking doing it. You're gonna get to a certain point where you're like, I want it to look this way and I want it to be this set up. This it's not gonna always be set up a specific way. It's not gonna be like, oh, I have this amount of time to study, or I'm gonna be able to do this before a class, or I'll take the kids that'll be happy, they won't be all up on me. Then I can study. Yeah, right. Like the other day, my youngest, my one-year-old was throwing up she wasn't eating we were like what the heck are we gonna do i had a test that same day i was like crap let me run her up here to go get looked at because i rather run even though i'm like eh, it's probably not too big with you i'm like let me run up here though because i got this test later and i'm not trying to have to run her somewhere and do this in the third and i got this test at five o'clock so let me do it now at 10 o'clock while I was there, you know, I was looking at my notes. I definitely was. Okay, she's cool. She's back to where she needs to be. She's fine. Let me get back to studying. I only had maybe, a, I, I ain't had that much time to study before class. And I did the test. I got 92 on the test. I'm so happy for that. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, then later on in the week, I was like, let me work on this day. I, something told me, intuition told me, do not pick up. End up, my baby had to end up going to the ER, getting fluids and all that. I had to stay overnight. And I'm like, oh my goodness. So I couldn't go to work, but I was like, you know what? Let me work on my other business because you all, I sell crystals, right? And I have a whole separate channel where I talk about all the other stuff. But anyways, let me work on that while I'm up here at this hospital. And I also was just like, you know what? At some point I was like, you know what? I'm not working on nothing. I'm just relaxing because I constantly am working. I'm constantly figuring out, oh, should I do this? Should I do that? And then it's like, I come home and I'm like, okay, I need to do this. I need to do that. I want to work today, but my baby has been on me like all day. She's just, you know, she's tired. She don't feel good. So you have to just at some point just be like, you know what? Everything's going to work out. I'm going to make the time to do what I can when I can. And don't beat yourself up. You are as a mother, as a person that wants to accomplish your, your goals, you're going to find the way to do it. It's going to happen. We're, your trust and believe you are going to do it. Okay. We have so much strength. Okay. Not just as women or moms, but just people in general. Okay, we have so much strength. When we want to do something, when we want to accomplish it, every aspect of our life is going to come into our life and show us you can do this. Okay, if you really want to do it, trust and believe. God, the universe, whatever is going to bring into your life the people that you need, the resources that you need, the everything that you need to accomplish it. So all you have to do is show up and be ready to do it, be able to do it. So with that being said, I think for me, one of the basic, the things that I've been working on is what can I do to make sure that throughout all of this craziness, I am good. What am I eating? What am I drinking? Am I working out? Am I meditating? Am I stretching? Am I going for walks? Am I having positive thoughts about myself? You know, school will help you to grow as a person if you allow it to because it you have to transform you got to raise to the you got to rise to the occasion because like i said you're going to be able to do it you're going to be able to get through class trust tr i know you will but you have to make sure you come out of it intact if you not right if you are the nucleus of school of work of your family of your income of whatever if you are the nucleus of all these things around you then the focus needs to be on you okay you need to make sure you're eating the right foods. You need to make sure you're getting enough fluids in your body. You need to make sure you're getting enough sleep. I know it doesn't always come, you know, sleep is like, you know, an old friend. I'm just waiting for her to come back. But no, I've been able to sleep pretty good, honestly. But 
you have to prioritize. Yes, you might want to stay up with your man or stay up with your boo, stay up with your homegirls or homeboys, but you know what? Sleep is more important to me because I want to wake up an hour before my kids wake up and I want to be able to relax. I want to be able to walk outside for a second, just look around. I want to be able to meditate. I want to be able to eat my food in peace. I want to be able to clean up my house a little bit before they wake up. I want to just be able to get up and get on my phone and not have no distractions, okay? Whatever it may be, you need to focus on how you can be um, more, you can be stronger because the more that you work on you, the more strong you can be, then everything that you touch is going to get better. But you have to focus on you. I can sit here and give you different tips about it. But if you're not in the right mindset to get through it, if you have not worked on yourself, if you're not building up yourself and giving yourself the fuel that you need to get through it, it's going to be very hard. And I know as moms and all that, we try to be like, oh, I just can't do it. I'm just so tired. And I'm just a mom, like mom life, the struggle. I get it. But work on you, put your energy on you, focus on you. Okay, take that time to put some love and some energy into yourself because you are the nucleus. Okay, boo, you are the, the one that makes all of this happen. If you ain't right, ain't nothing right. Remember that. Okay. Uh. Let's see, please do one on best shifts to work as an agency nurse with kids and in school. I mean, just whatever shift that you, I don't know, honestly, that, that's up to you and your lifestyle as far as the best shifts to work because for me, the best shift is really day shift because I can still come home and be with my kids because my kids go to sleep at like 8.30. So I can wake up, get there, boom, they take their nap at like 11, they get up at like two. So my husband, he doesn't have to be up with them too much and then I can come home, I can take a bath, you know, relax and all that and grab them. We can play for a little bit, go outside, still we can still go to the store together. And then I go to sleep at 8.30 and I still have time to study. I still have time to hang out with my husband. I still have time to work on my business. I still have time to do other things. So to me, day shift does work. But sometimes day shift will drag you. Day shift will take every last inch of your body, every last inch of your edges, every last inch of your essence. So sometimes I'm like, I'll just rather do an evening shift. And it really depends on the day that it falls on. Cause I might want to do an evening shift on Sundays, even though I told myself I'm not working on Sundays, but now I'm thinking, should I go ahead and look and see if I need to pick up on Sunday? <laughs> Cause like I said, my baby was six. So I have not been picking up, but any home, you just got to see what works for you. Cause it might not just be the shift. Cause with me with agency, sometimes I'll work a day shift. Sometimes I'll work an evening shift. It just depends on where I can get in it. Where can I work at? Who can take me in so i changed my shift i just never do night shift um so i changed my shift based on what i got going on that week so that's the whole beauty of agency is that depending on what you got going on with your family your kids and your whatever your child care whatever you can switch it up so it, it's just up to you and you don't have to be locked into one shift so uh let's see pre-nursing school advice uh i have a video on this um Pre I don't know, it just depends on what specifically you want to know, like advice about what getting ready for nursing school. I just feel like the best advice I can get to anybody that wants to do anything is that you need to do some self work, man. Like that's that's all it come down to in life, I'm realizing. Like I people know exactly what to do. I'm gonna end this video in a minute. Hold on. I think. I might look at some of y'all questions, some more questions, but I'm gonna leave it with this. We know exactly what to do. We got the internet, we got YouTube, we got books, we got other people, we ha we know what to do. We know the steps that it takes. There's everything that you wanna do, it's like tens of thousands of people who have already done it before. People be like, I need tips on losing weight. You know how to lose weight. You know that you need to eat a little less, change up your diet, and you need to work out. And sometimes you don't even have to work out. You can just eat, change the way you eat. We know this, okay? But the thing that clicks for people to help them to go from point A to point B to point Z to the point of feeling like, okay, I actually accomplished what I want, it's you. It's not the steps. It's not the tips. Yes, the tips help. Don't get me wrong. The tips help, but they don't help you to accomplish the thing. Sometimes those, sometimes they don't, sometimes they do, sometimes they don't. But the, the tips help you to change you. 
the tips help you to activate certain parts of yourself that needs to be worked on, that needs to be worked on because it's a reason why you haven't accomplished it. It's not because you didn't take the right steps, it's because you haven't shown up the way you need to show up in life. You haven't worked on your procrastination issues. You haven't worked on your low self-esteem. You haven't worked on your laziness, if you wanna say. You haven't worked on your anxiety. You haven't worked on your overworking energy, that energy of feeling like I'm not enough, so I gotta keep going for stuff. I gotta keep doing this. I gotta do everything under the sun, and you don't get nothing done. Oh, I was talking to myself, I think. I think I was talking to myself. Yeah, let me drink. That's what it is is it starts with you. This goes back to what I was talking about with you know, being a mom. Everything starts with you. So my biggest advice for anybody that wants to go to nursing school or do anything in life, that's what I talk about my, on my other channel, Stay Forever Sure, I talk about this, is you, 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 we have to, all of us have to work on ourselves. Work on that voice in our head that's giving us all this whole list of excuses of why we haven't gone to school. Whole list of excuses of why we haven't looked up just even looked up the information why are we just continuing to look up videos look up this look up that get all this information and not actually do anything the steps are there the blueprints are there there's tons of blueprints on how to go from like i said point a to point b to point z to actually living the life you want but you have to unlock you you have to unlock what's stopping you you have to the best advice I can say is to focus on you. Focus on in the past, why didn't I accomplish this? Not necessarily in a sense of being like, why didn't I do it? I never ain't gonna do it. I ain't smart. Da, 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 da. I ain't saying do all that. I ain't saying have no pity party. I'm not saying beat yourself up. I'm just saying look at certain things in your life and be like, why can't I accomplish this? What is holding me back? And work on that. Because once you work on you, everything will fall into place. I'm telling y'all, like, everything will fall into place. Everything you need, the money will come, the people will come, the time will come, the energy will come, all of it is gonna literally fall into your lap. But if you ain't right with you, you ain't never gonna get there, boo, okay? That's that, okay? I'm gonna send some good energy to everybody. <laughs> I love you all, I appreciate you all. I'm gonna let y'all go.